innovative areas here at Epcot. And a few safety reminders before we go. We do ask that you please remain seated at all times, keeping your arms, hands, legs, and feet inside the boat at all times. Also, parents, please keep behind your children at all times. Please remain seated. Also, as a courtesy to those around you, please refrain from videotaping and flash photography until we reach our greenhouses, and at that point, you may take all the videos you wish. I guess I'll sit back, relax, and enjoy living with the land. concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Many forests are also extremely rich and productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicines, and other elements essential to our lives. Nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert, but over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. 
Even the hooves the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. Of all the forces at work on the land, humans have had one of the most profound effects. The need to produce food for a growing world led to the enormous use, and sometimes overuse, of the land. In our search for more efficient ways to grow food, we often fail to realize the impact of our methods. learning to live with the land, discovering better ways to grow food that will assure both human and environmental well-being. We can reduce the need for fertilizers. In farmlands across America, we're learning that by plowing under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil without the use of chemicals. In Saudi Arabia and Mexico, we're learning to produce food on desert sea coasts by developing and planting crops that thrive on salt. Here at Epcot, we're learning to reduce the need for pesticides by using natural predators like ladybugs and rocks. We meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land. Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. All right, guys, you can go ahead and take out your cameras if you wish now. We're about to enter our living laboratories where scientists from NASA, Nestle, the Department of Agriculture, and right here at Epcot are exploring innovative and sustainable methods of food production. Now, our researchers are always trying new crops and different growing techniques, so each time you visit, you'll see lots of new crops growing alongside some of your more popular traditional ones. For example, the bananas growing on your right are the most popular traditional fruit in the world. Each year we consume over 28 million tons of bananas. Bananas are rich in potassium and fiber, which makes them a great addition to your diet. Coming up on your left, those unusual looking fruit are called jackfruit. Jackfruit are native to India. They can grow up to 80 pounds and are an excellent source of vitamins A and C. There's an unusual looking fruit coming up on your right. It's called a fluted pumpkin. The fluted pumpkins are grown primarily in Africa where they can survive in even the poorest of soils. But unlike other members of the pumpkin family, the fluted pumpkins are grown primarily for their edible leaves, which from what I'm told tastes like cabbage. And these tall looking fruit coming up on your right are called dragon fruit. They're a form of cactus. Uh, in India, uh, no, excuse me, in Asia they're grown primarily for export, but here in the United States we use them to flavor our favorite popular fruit drinks. Sobe is a great example. Does anybody have an herb garden at home? Anybody have an herb garden? I see one. Awesome. Now imagine how bland some of your favorite foods would be without the taste of herbs and spices. Now, interestingly, the flavors that we find appealing in herbs and spices are the plant's natural defenses, which makes them naturally unappealing to animals or predators that might eat them. Now, these are papayas over here on your left. Now the fruits are high in vitamins, and the flesh of the papaya actually makes a great meat tenderizer. Now, when I mentioned farming, you probably don't think about fish, but fish farming or aquaculture is currently being used to increase yields and to protect wild fish stocks. Coming up first on your right, you'll get to see our hybrid bass. The hybrid bass are a mix between white and striped bass. They're then extremely hardy and fast growing fish, which makes them a favorite among American fish farmers here in the United States. The sturgeon, like the ones you see on both sides of the boat, are one of the oldest species of fish. Uh, they're harvested primarily for their caviar, and due to the growing demand, they're at a high risk of being overfished. Aquaculture is one way to protect these natural resources. Now my buddies over here on the right are the American alligator. An American alligator is no longer an endangered species. In fact, there are over one million alligators living in Florida alone. Aquaculture is one reason for their recovery. Many alligators are raised on farms for their meat and hides, while others play a key role in woodlands conservation. 
And we can produce about 6,500 pounds of fish each year on our aqua farms. Many of the fish featured in our aqua farms right here at Epcot are also featured in our Walt Disney World restaurants. On this next greenhouse is where we hold some of our biggest ideas. If you look behind me in the far right corner, it's our winter melons. The winter melons are very popular throughout Asia, and using our advanced growing techniques, we used to be able to grow winter melons that can grow up to 50 pounds. Now we can grow winter melons that can grow in excess of 90 pounds. I know it's not Halloween, but coming up next is one of our real giants, the Atlantic Giant Pumpkin. The Atlantic Giant Pumpkin can grow to over 1,000 pounds. And the pumpkins get their orange color from beta carotene, which is an important antioxidant. Now to these three pumpkins, the one on the furthest on the left, it's our biggest, but it only weighs about 200 pounds. Coming up next, some of the biggest members of the citrus family. The pomelo on your right tastes like a sweet grapefruit, while the nine pound lemon on your left tastes like a lemon. In this next greenhouse, we're testing some innovative ways to grow crops. Our cucumbers and eggplants are growing vertically in a system that provides them with just the right amount of water and nutrients. Growing this way helps for better airflow throughout the leaves, which can help reduce disease. You can try the same technique at home by growing your plants on trellises. From what I'm being told, the cucumbers on both sides of the boat are growing about a foot a day. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. They're using a nutrient film technique to grow the lettuce you see on both sides of the boat. And the advantage of this is that it reduces the amount of water and nutrients needed, therefore saving the farmers money and helping to protect the environment. If you look closely on your left side of the boat, you'll be able to see a hidden Mickey. Yeah, no. Here's something you guys don't see every day. Here's tomatoes growing on trees. Actually, each tomato tree is a single tomato plant bred to grow in this unique way. The advantage of the tomato tree is that it produces many more tomatoes than a typical tomato plant would. In fact, the tomato tree in the red has just set a Guinness World Record by harvesting over 21,000 tomatoes. That tree is just over one year old. Coming up next are Cinderella pumpkins. They're an inspiration for our most famous magical coach. Well, maybe not all of them. The Mickey-shaped ones were the result of some imaginative growing techniques developed by our researchers. We place the pumpkins inside the mold when they're about the size of a softball, and in two weeks, you have a Mickey-shaped pumpkin. <laughs> now at our creative greenhouse, we're exploring cutting-edge research that may completely change the way we grow crops. You might have noticed that we're not using any soil in our greenhouses. This system is called hydroponics, and it's already being used in areas where the soil has already been depleted. And we've taken this one step further with our aeroponic system. The flying squash plants on both sides of the boat are getting just the right amount of water and nutrients they need to spray directly onto their roots as they pass through the mist boxes. Now in our laboratories, we're working with the Department of Agriculture to develop dwarf pear trees. But a fruit will be normal size, but the smaller trees will be easier to grow and harvest. Our final experiment is absolutely out of this world as we work with NASA to learn how to develop crops for future space colonies. So as you guys can see, there's so much we can learn from science and nature about living with the land. The laboratories and greenhouses you've seen today are just one part of the story. Once harvested, the crops must be handled with care as they go on their journey from field to your dinner table. Around the globe, scientists from Nestle and other organizations are dedicated to improving the quality and taste of the foods that the world enjoys and relies on. Working together, we can help to preserve the land as a precious and beautiful resource while still meeting the demands of an ever-growing world. Only then will we truly be living with the land. of Walt Disney World and Nessie, I'd like to thank you for sharing the unique experience of living with the land. If you'd like to find out more, you can sign up for our Behind the Seeds tour. It's an in-depth walking tour of our greenhouses, and it departs every hour. If you'd like more information, you can go to the left at the entrance of Soren. For your safety, we do ask that you please remain seated at all times until our boat comes to a complete stop at the dock, keeping our arms, hands, legs, and feet inside the boat.
Also a surrender. Don't forget to check out Illuminations. It's our nighttime firework show. It's in the lagoon. It begins right at 9 o'clock. Once again, thank you for coming aboard. As you exit, you're going to exit behind me to your right. Please watch your head as you exit. Thanks for the rest of the day. Just remember here at our time.